and me kind of seeing it growing up and then watching it kind of develop to where it's at now puts me in a position where I can kind of see where we can go from from here on out, you know. So education became something all of a sudden now that we're like, okay, we're going to focus on this because we think it's a good idea. Yeah. Well, let's go beyond the sci-fi. Okay. Now, um, you and I, some I guess it's been some years ago now, sat on a panel where B-Boy Midas uh, from Style Elements was talking about the the history of hip hop and the rightful, um, I guess I don't want to say owners, but the rightful creators of hip hop because, um, and you know, through pop culture and you know the telling of stories, it's been kind of mixed. And other people have been thrown in the mix, and some people have been removed from the mix. Now, you're coming in as a Caucasian guy, right? Yep. Um, like, what is it about the culture that drew you in as as a Caucasian guy into this, this black, this black, I don't want to say existence, but this black culture? So, for me, the music was my... Uh I would say closest thing I could relate to from what I saw. And I say that because I grew up listening, playing jazz in my household since I was a kid. So tenor saxophone, Coltrane, Miles Davis, Dizzy Gillespie, you name it, all that kind of stuff. My mother listened to Prince, Led Zeppelin, all these types of things. So, like, black music has always been in my household, mm. which I think is really interesting, right, growing up. I mean, I'm I'm Italian-American, right? Okay. Which is also, I have these conversations a lot with people, but not saying that that's different. It's, it's, it's different as opposed to what I think people view as whiteness today. Right. Right. Um, but history shows that people who have, you know, been immigrants in America did eventually assimilate into what whiteness is. Right. So, and you know, at a certain point, you know, Italian Americans became white. Exactly. And right. and it's funny that you bring that up because you're right. Like, like um, Irish had to become white uh italians had to become white and today we think like oh he's italian he's white but there was a point in time where it's like no he's an italian you know no this is great because I, I love talking about this man it's really interesting to me right um so depends kind of when when your parents maybe came to america also Okay, my father was born in 1933. Oh, wow. So his energy, his stories, his relationship to whiteness was a little bit different. And that he kind of instilled in my mom. My mom is significantly younger than my dad, right? Okay. So when they met, a lot of his um, ways were kind of like you know passed down through her things like that my conversations with him made me view whiteness in a different way but i knew the history so it's not like i was surprised but i was confused right. when i was younger because even my you know latino friends or my black friends would be like tony ain't white he's italian <laughs> which i used to always be like no Right. I said, I hear you, but no, it's it's white, you know, and, and yeah. only because I I needed to understand how things were really working out here. So regardless of even what my father may have experienced, and I say that because Italians weren't really brought into whiteness like a long, long time ago. Mm -hmm. it, I mean, World War II, we were still considered aliens because right. if everyone knows their American history, the Italians fought on the opposing side 
Okay, so if you were Italian and you were in America during World War II, no, nah, we don't like you. Right, you were you the know? enemy behind. You were behind enemy lines. Hundred percent, hundred percent. You know, we were the WAPs to them. You know, all these derogatory terms. You know, which which also meant without papers, right? Because we were immigrants. I did not know that. I was one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. I mean, white. White history, I, this is why I like talking about this stuff, because I also think white history is interesting in America. And regardless if you were um, Irish, Italian, Polish, um, this idea of whiteness was different for everybody. And depending on how you were kind of brought into that concept, also, also, it's very telling of how you may act within America now, you know. My understanding of my father's experience, my own family's existence in America, you know, my own personal um, uh, relationship to, to blackness in my neighborhood, or, or what do I say, um, proximity to black folks was, like, really close, right? I mean, I was in high school with with I was the few of the white people in my class most of the time you know wow especially in my circle so when I started getting into hip-hop too there were not a lot of white people it was um few probably now, more than of course the 70s I would imagine right. but um still now, that, wasn't a white thing you know did that work for you or against you because you, I mean, you're you're like a a stylish dude, you know what I'm saying? You, you know, the the fashion you got that part down, so on and so. You have the look. Did that negatively or positively impact you? Not just in your circle, your your social circle with the b boys and so forth, but like, what about the rest of your Italian community? Were they like, what is wrong with this Tony kid? So here here's the difference. Here's where the 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 white uh, pockets of things. This. <laughs> No doubt. Right. So <laughs> in Italian American culture, when it comes to fashion and those types of things, we do that. Okay. Like that's that's normal. The chains, the you know, this shit has always been me since I was a kid. You know what I mean? The flash the jewelry, my dad had everything. You know what right. I mean? And it was just like that's who you were. It's a stereotype type i guess you could say you know no i don't really know exactly the history of why you know what i mean right um but everyone that i knew who were italian had a certain look to them so when i saw hip-hop it kind of was like oh tight you know <laughs> i like this <laughs> it fits you know right so certain things i think in hip-hop too were were relative and similar never the same you know and i think that's a lot of what I'm trying to get at too with conversation. You had to know you can't be under the illusion of inclusion because you do hip hop. Mm. No, you're white. Don't forget that. Man, you, know, you just said something right there. I got reminders growing up as well. And I, it's not that I needed them, but I was like, oh, okay, I see what you're talking about. They also wanted to kind of keep me in a certain thing like, yo, okay, you can participate to a certain extent you know and um so i had to earn my stripes in order to you know at least get some sort of respect so it wasn't like i didn't have the m&m effect wow. <laughs> you know what i'm saying yeah where oh he's dope for a white dude you know it wasn't like that it was more right. like no you don't belong here oh wow but because you're dope let's go like you know what i mean so so you got the um, meritocracy treatment. Right. Right. Which is fine. Like it was never it was never to a point of it was more based on skill level. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's not like I was like beat up or made fun of or trashed. It was nothing like that. I heard white boy all the time. That never really hurt my feelings. Um I mean it it, it ate at me a little bit because of again, my family's relationship to whiteness and all that and I was like, All right, like I get it. <laughs> I don't like that word, but cool. You know what I'm right. saying? Like, because I also understood, 
everyone else around me as well. And I think that was the important part about that. Like you have to know, knowing your history is one thing, but then knowing the present is just as important, you know? So when I'm speaking to someone who's black, I understand the history of, of black in America. So there's certain instances where, you know, whatever situation I'm feeling, whatever going through, I know when and when to not speak or do something that I know would be painful to someone who I who I think would take offense to what it is I'm about to say right now. You know, and social I, awareness. I, huh? Social awareness. Hundred percent. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's that's exactly the word I think. Um so I'm I'm so thankful to have lived in the experience of of New Jersey and New York and Philadelphia especially cuz I spent more time in Philly I think than anything else um to really be hip to that and it helped me move throughout the world and throughout time and understand also how I can be a contributor to to a an art form that doesn't come from my people and how do you properly do that without really just totally fucking it up? And, you know, because I've seen that too. I can recognize that because I'm culturally aware as well. So when I say right. it, I'm like, no, that's not it. Right, right. You know, that's going to get you in trouble. <laughs> like there's certain things too. I, I don't know if you heard this term before. I had a conversation last week and, and or a couple of weeks ago. And, and they were like, oh, I never heard that before. But it's called race baiting. And joining us now from our set here next to the C-SPAN bus is Eric Deggins. And here is his book, Race Baiter, How the Media Wields Dangerous Words to Divide a Nation. Mr. Deggins, what's a race baiter? <laughs> Good question. I'm actually trying to redefine the word race baiter because what I've found is when you try to have discussions about controversial issues centered on race and prejudice, often people try to shut down the discussion by calling you the race baiter. You know, you're bringing up these uncomfortable conversations, you're trying to get some sort of power by accusing someone else of being insensitive. And my whole point is that as a nation that's becoming much more diverse, becoming, uh, you know, much, we're, we're seeing a greater impact for people of color. Uh, we're going to have these conversations more and more often. And we really should feel free to talk about things, talk about our differences uh, in a way that's open, in a way that's non judgmental, and in a way that's sort of aimed at making progress on these issues instead of trying to pretend that they don't exist. Where did the name come from? <laughs> it came from my good friend Bill O'Reilly from Fox News Channel. Yes, I never, before you tell everybody what that is, but I never understood that because I, I was always like, in, in my mind, I'm like, well, you get rid of racism, you get rid of race baiting. But because I never under, quite understood what race baiting, I'm like, if I talk about racism, I'm race baiting. But anyway, back to you. Right. So ra race baiting doesn't, it, it's, it's not like directly uh, connected to racism, but racism uh could could be a way that you race bait somebody because you know racism exists you know you can be in any type of racially uh, charged situation and know exactly what to do or say to trigger somebody that's a bit of race baiting too um which you know at the same time is perfectly fine it's like when you call people out for doing something uh it could be seen as a bait because you know that they don't know right so you can continuously just find that thing and keep poking at it and be like, uh-huh, see, yeah, yeah, you don't like that, huh? I got you, you know. Um, so I got hip to a lot of stuff like that growing up, and, and I'm not happy to say that I did I did race bait a little bit growing up and, and got, you know, people kind of messed up over that uh, kind of stuff, you know. Um, I feel some sort of way now that, you know, I probably wouldn't have done that in the instances that I did now that I've learned more um, just about life, <laughs> you know, young and crazy, I guess. I don't know. But, um, you know, I think my overall, the awareness of, of, of culture, the experience of being um, accepted into something like hip hop has taught me to survive, especially living in Philadelphia um, you know, I mean, I was in Southwest Philly. I moved around West Philly for a while mm. and, 
you know, I think people assume that I was gentrifying the neighborhood if they see me walking through there. For more quality content from Beyond the Cypher with Ill Skills, don't forget to press the like and subscribe buttons. Let us know how we're doing down in the comment section. And to make sure you don't miss anything from the channel, go ahead and smash that notification bell. We appreciate the love and support so far. So peace until the next episode. Bam, 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 bam.